bringing together a group of people who are active on social audio, people I listened to, folks that I respected, and not always did I agree with them, but I always thought their what they brought to the table was so important in the social audio sphere. And I thought that if I brought them together and we did a, a talk together we, and to discuss important items, not only would we grow as individuals, our audience would grow themselves through different insights, perspectives, and brilliant advice. Today's topic is about community. And it's really topical <laughs> with what's happening on Twitter. And we're going to talk about three aspects. What's of happening community. on Twitter? Nothing. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're going to be talking about what is community? Why is community building important? How do you build community? And finally, the power of social audio to help build community. You'll notice I'm not calling on people. Our group of dyna dynamic speakers will jump in when they have the opportunity to add to the conversation. And I'll ask all of our speakers to state their name as much as they can before they speak. And if possible, build on the points of the speaker before them. A show like this is only as good as the team that makes it. And boy, is there an awesome team assembled today. I'm joined by two amazing co-hosts, Rose and Daryl, and I'll like, I'd like to let them introduce themselves. Go ahead, Rose. Go ahead, Daryl. Okay. Hi, I'm Rose Horowitz. Uh, my name uh, is, and I am a Pulitzer nominated journalist and the founder and, and host of Woman to Follow, uh, which is uh, aimed at amplifying women's voices on social media. So it's all about community. So I'm really thrilled to be here. I'm uh, Daryl Ledger. I'm a bit of an influencer on the Wisdom platform. I run spaces on there called the Deep Thinking Lounge. Mm -hmm. I also host the Deep Grip Planet podcast. And I've spent 32 years uh, slaving in a radio studio. Thanks, Rose. Thanks, Daryl. They're going to help me run questions today, throw stuff up in the nest on Twitter. We are also, as Daryl said, on Wisdom right now. We are also on Clubhouse. And we are on LinkedIn, and I think we might be on some other places that the team has put together. Speaking of the team, let's go to the speakers that's on our panel today. Please introduce yourself in whatever manner you'd like. You have an hour? <laughs> go ahead, George. Keep it short. Hi, George Silverman, the mind skills guy, a psychologist by training, uh, promoting the whole idea of mind skills, which are the universal skills needed for success that cross <clears throat> all personal and professional areas. Hey, everyone. I'm Samantha Post. I'm a Canadian polymath. I'm a serial entrepreneur and business consultant. Um, what some people find interesting is that I'm a managing partner and operator of a commercial crop farm in Canada, so we actually ship food uh, around the world. My claim to fame was I'm a previous tax expert. I've actually even submitted proposals to the Canadian Finance Senate Committee. Um, and right now I am the leader and founder of a mastermind community called the Medici Modern Polymath. So community is online community is a passion of mine and I can't wait to talk about it with everyone else. Hey everyone, uh, my name is Mariah, Mariah Howard, also known as the mother of marketing, and I am a full stack developer engineer with a marketing background in corporate development and project management. I actually specialize in working with minority startups, and my focus has been for the past four or five years and closing the wealth gap. So in doing that, we really make sure that our business owners are structured properly in order to be eligible for funding opportunities and contracts. So I have now made the transition to dive nose deep into blockchain technology, Web3 development, and Taoism. That's a word. That's a real thing. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can find me at the Developer DAO, and we're also building out the Developer DAO Academy and agency as we speak. That's a little bit about me. Thanks, Brian. 
Awesome. I'll follow up there with uh, with Mariah. Hello, everyone. I am Dr. Jasmine Berry. I am a research scientist in the neural AI space where I focus on applications related to health and uh, also robotics in the social assistive space. Uh, I am very much interested in kind of pushing the, the field of science forward from that perspective and from that angle. Uh, through the combination of neuroscience and AI. And I'm, I'm very fortunate to be in this conversational space where we can discuss what does community look like and the power of it, especially as technology continues to advance in the future, will that change the dynamic of communities as mm -hmm. our um, machines or even you know our, our devices that are near and dear and to us as they continue to advance and, and get us smarter, so to speak, how will that change how we interact with each other? So I'm, I'm very grateful to be a part of this discussion today. Hello, everyone. Uh, this is Juwadia, aka Gia Al Hassan. I'm an African American digital nomad currently living in Malaysia. I'm a serial entrepreneur, online marketing expert, funnels and content strategist for high-end coaches and entrepreneurs. I'm also a professional community builder and the host of the Decoded by Gia podcast. Who let the dogs out? <laughs> I'm Jason Zakowski. I'm the dog dad of Bunsen and Beaker, the science dogs on Twitter. We run one of the largest science communication accounts on the platform, and we teach science through the eyes of a dog and the lens of empathy and cuteness. And I am super Whoa. proud to be here today with all of you. Great introductions. Let's get to it. Now, those of you in the audience, if you have questions, we'd love for you to put it in the chat. And at the end, there'll be, a, there'll be a time to request the mic to ask questions or give your own sight, insights to what was discussed today. So I will start. Team, are we ready? Are we good to go? Yeah. Give me some emojis. Yeah? Yeah, emojis yeah, are yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, let's get yeah. it done. I don't like emojis. <laughs> no. <laughs> what about this hundred, George? <laughs> I've been tweeting about emojis, so we'll leave it at that. <laughs> So there's this great quote that I love. If It goes like this, and it's not attributed to anybody. It's, if you want to go quickly, go alone. And if you want to go far, go together. So the first question I'm posing to the team assembled today is, what is community? What is it? Think about but like words that would describe community, like <laughs> feelings. What is it? Because before we talk about why and how, we need to define it. So I will throw it to the team and go ahead. I think first off, well, this is Rose speaking. The community is a place where you feel you belong in some way. It's, it's some sense of making, you know, making a connection with one person, with five people, with a hundred people that you have something in common with. Building on that, I think it's, this is George. I think it's a group of people who are, who feel that way that Rose just described because they have common fundamental values. They may have tremendous disagreements, but they have fundamental values and they're looking out for each other. They're looking out for each other's common interests. Um, so I live in a neighborhood, not a community, whole bunch of houses. We, I see my neighbors sometimes, but when we don't have meetings, we don't have shared values, et cetera. I think Samantha lives in a community where people are agriculturally oriented, have certain common values and all of that. So I'll leave it at that. We can build on that. Yeah, I, I think that's interesting to say. This is Mariah. Mariah here. I apologize. I got No, it's all you. good. It's all good. <laughs> We're all getting used to using our names. <laughs> or announcing before we speak. But, announcing, right. Um, but I, I think that it's important because it's almost as if you're touching on inclusion now. And it reminds me of a quote that I had always really written into a lot of my uh, college essays was that you aren't necessarily um, included if you're just invited to the party. 
it's included when you're asked to dance and that in like actually means you have to be engaged so I do agree with you George that community also involves that engagement and I was going to add that it has to um, be built and it does include time um, so that you're able to build those connections with your community. Mm-hmm. I'm, this is Daryl with the Dashes. I'm going to say that uh, community is a little bit like the family you choose uh, that's beyond your you know, uh, direct family. And it's because you feel seen and heard or you seem to feel as though people get you and understand you and understand what you're going through. Um, so I think it's, it's an elective family that you um, request to become involved with uh, or a part of because uh, you need it for yourself. Mm. Hey, this is Samantha here. I think the community depends on, there's almost like you have to put a word before it. So like where I live, it's like agriculture community. So we have this shared agriculture, you know, when we ask, you know, how's, you know, when we talk about the weather, it's not small talk. It's <laughs> big. I mean, it mean, it could be hundreds <laughs> of thousands of dollars in a win. We're not, that's not small talk. Mm-hmm. Um, but, and then when people ask us about the weather, they're actually asking us, did you get timely rain so that you have an income? So that's a type of community. And then there's also these like types of online communities as well. And that's something that's like kind of a whole nother, a whole nother um, category. And there's like different types of online communities. So generally speaking, what we're seeing is like knowledge and learning communities. And then we also see like network and advisory communities. We see event communities, we see membership communities, and we see brand a huge rise in brand communities. And then we see ones communities of actions, which sometimes can fall over into like a nonprofit organization or even sometimes a religious or faith based. So um, those sometimes can cross over into your physical world and some into online. But there's definitely many of us may have 10 different communities that we are part of. Some we choose, like Daryl said, and some are just a matter of physical location, the family we're in, maybe the occupation we're in, or those sorts of things. Absolutely. Well said. Mm-hmm. Um, just to to add a, a little bit on top of that as well. Uh, I've this used... is Dr. Jasmine Berry. Yeah, <laughs> thank you, Jason. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I, I may need to talk about this whole space. Um, uh, yeah, definitely. So throughout, uh, I guess, for communities, uh, I, I view it as a, a group of people or, or members, uh, a part of um, a body, which eventually is, I think, is it's unified. Uh, but um, I guess more of a feeling or the emotional part of it, I feel it's a, a support system or something that uh, I could lean on uh, whenever I can't, as an individual, get something done or if I need questions or if I don't know the entirety about something, there should be someone in, in my community that can do that. And uh, I think the only thing I'll say uh, in addition to this um, now uh, for the moment is that, you know, a community is also a a place where you have a a direction to go or there's an end goal. So I think as a community, there should be a navigation towards everyone is working towards a common goal at the end of the day uh, through each of those communities. And uh, I just don't want to make community only seem You know, you just have something associated with other people. But I think there is a corporate movement towards something, towards uh, uh, achieving something that uh, makes a community thrive in the long run. Mm -hmm. And because because this is George, because of the common goals, there is a higher and not a total, but a higher degree of trust. Because I can pretty much count on my community Will that with my community will act in my interest again, not a hundred percent, but more than random. <laughs> uh, and, and so there's a considerably more, more trust, and for that reason, considerably more psychological safety. Mm-hmm. Mm, psychological safety in community that should yeah. be a standard, it shouldn't be called yeah. a community if you aren't psychologically safe. I love that, George. Thank you, thank you, Maura. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Gia here. Um, one of the things that we didn't mention about communities, in addition to what everyone else said, is that it's where people are united through a common struggle as well. So yes. with the same stories, this is where people are united into groups and they create this sense of urgency and how they find healing within, how they find uh, ad- it's like advisory at the same the same thing that Samantha and Daryl mentioned as well. So 
it could be a lot of things that people are struggling with. You don't know that you needed it right now, but you go through phases of your life that, okay, I need this right now. So you try and find a community. So a community grows with you and at all, you can also outgrow a community. So it's a place where that grows with you through phases of your life. So it's, it's how you, how you define a community is completely, de- completely depends on your purpose of that phase of your life, completely depends on that passion that you're, you're trying to deliver, that the goals that you're going through. So this is how I see communities. And from my experience from building communities for the past, I don't know, 10 years now, I see a lot of people come and go through communities and they would leave sometimes when they're in a different phase of their life or they have outgrown the community, but you see them coming back again because of the people. So to me, at the end of the day, a community is people, is what makes a community is, is people, is how you're connecting with those people. Sometimes I even see people like in communities that we manage with clients is that people have outgrown the community and they really don't need the course or the masterminds anymore, but they still stay there. And when we ask them, why are you still here the, for the people because of the connections that I made, because of the relationships that I that I fostered with these people. So it's it's something that we are that that how that makes us feel that we belong this is what a community is to me it's, it's a place where we belong it's not about mm-hmm. sometimes not even about the faces of our lives it's just a place where we belong a place where we connect and a place where we are heard and acknowledged and we can share us, uh, our stories safely just like george men- mentioned the psychological safety so this is what um, a community is from my experience in building communities this is Jason. I that what a great point, Gia. Um, just to add my own bit to that, I love that y- y- communities may come and go for you, but it's the people and the connections that c- is the glue that keep you there, um, depending on what's going on in your life. Um, I'm connected to everybody in this space by their expertise, by their empathy, by just the amazing people that they are. Um, I don't know how to grow anything, but I really respect and love when Samantha talks about farming um mariah could explain web three and blockchain to me a thousand times and i still won't get it but i'll still love listening to her explanation um dr jasmine is there to make to, to tell us that skynet skynet isn't gonna murder us all tomorrow and that's great <laughs> and then we've got rose as a journalist and daryl with his deep thoughts i've learned so much from george with his mind skills and then gia of course has been an amazing backbone to the, to the community with her marketing and editing skills, plus her, her show herself. So I'm connected to all of you. And through that, the conversationalist is a better show. So that to me is what community is. Well said. Where's the awe? We need to like collect yeah. it. Yeah. We can all do it right it's now. It's all. Oh. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry. Oh, I, run, I run a wholesome, feel-good account. It's nothing. I can't be anything else. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the good things about being a community, as you as you saw, is that you know we each have a, a great insight as to who we are, and mm-hmm. we've heard that in other shows where someone has said, "Well, you know, what makes uh, Samantha special to me is X," and if we didn't have a sense of belonging, we wouldn't be going there, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm always surprised how often you all bring up farming because I, I mean, I only to really talk about it on Saturdays with all of you, but none of my other content is about farming. Well, if you're from an urban, <laughs> this is Jason, if you're from an urban center, like I live, I live on a farm as well. We don't farm, but I live on a farm. But if you're from an urban center, it's almost like you're mystical, Samantha, that you are a farmer, <laughs> right? Yeah, it's, so just so, yeah. it's so, so outside of the average right. person who lives in a city's experience. Like you grow stuff from the soil. Are you a but, hobbit? Like yeah, but see, more than that, it's even it. It's a universal metaphor mm-hmm. for growing things and you know planting seeds and having them come to fruition and all of that stuff. It's a universal metaphor for life. So the farmers and the ranchers are, are you know, those city folks are like miracle workers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Good point. How do you do that? <laughs> a lot of very big equipment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, well, some of us have. Uh, never mind. <laughs> you know, like you know the movie Ewok or the um Star Wars, and there's like the Ewoks, and they have there's those like massive star like those those things on stilts, those big huge machines. ATST walkers. Yeah, that's yeah. basically what our equipment looks like. <laughs> right. 
And uh, that- as I see you requesting to speak, we will have a section at the end where we'll invite speakers up. So um, those of you requesting, I didn't mention that, there will be a Q&A plus your, the ability to tell your own story with communities. And don't worry, we'll get there. Sorry, team. Somebody was speaking and I cut you off. No, I think they were done. Rose, over to you, I think, for the next part of this. One of the things that, you know, if we're going to ask and talk about what is community and how do we make community, to me, the, the big question is why community? Why have a community? Uh, and a one, another way of putting that is to ask, where would we be without community? Mm. And thinking about that, you know, one of the most fundamental drives for people to want to connect with each other. You know, why did the first poets recite their words in public squares? Both for expressing themselves and the desire to share something with a larger world around you. Marketing. Hmm. <laughs> well, no, it's the George. You're not wrong. This is Jason. You're not wrong. Yeah. George, George, could you expand on that? Or, or Rose, are you done <laughs> posing the question? No, let, let Rose continue. Sorry, okay. I was just. <laughs> okay, um, I you know love poetry, and I I found these words by John Donne, which really uh, spoke to me. I think for this, uh, you know, this uh, conversationalist episode, and I'll just read, say a few words. But this was something he. It's not a poem he wrote, it's a meditation that he wrote when he was seriously ill in the winter. No man is an island entire of itself. Every man is a piece of the continent, a part of the main. If a cloud be washed away by the sea, Europe is the sea, as well as if a promontory were, as well as if a manner of thy friends or the, of, thy own, of thine own were. Any man's death diminishes me because I am involved in mankind and therefore never send to know for whom the bell tolls. It tolls for thee. Hmm. Okay. Got shivers. It's wonderful, but I have to ob- object to the use of the word men. Well, yes, but this was in 16. <laughs> <laughs> this was in oh, oh, Just kidding. Just kidding. Yeah. I know. Just well, just, oh, yeah. Well, you knew I would wonderful. object to that, but, you know. Right. Of course. <laughs> of course. Uh, but this idea that, you know, um, and, th- and, the, and the idea that he's writing this when he's he's so ill, right? He's writing this, mm-hmm. I'm not alone here, right? And that's, you know, beautiful words. But, you know, he's, he's, he's giving himself comfort in the community, in the world, in Europe. And remember, you know, England is an island, right? Um, You know, where he, where he is at that moment. So with that, Mm -hmm. I'll open it up to everyone to say, why, why do we have community? Why is that community? I think building, building on that, the, and, and certainly not as poetically or as eloquently. I think the why community, by the way, you can't resist pointing out this is an example of first principles thinking. You go, you take a concept like this and you say, what if it didn't exist? Let's reinvent it right now. And you go back to the basics. And so I applaud you guys for doing this. Uh, but why community? Simply because the whole is better than the sum of its parts. That's my answer. That's called the uh, gestalt. Um, uh, yes. Laws of Gestalt, uh, actually. So I think yep. uh, definitely uh, uh, to that point, uh, why community is important. Uh, you know, innately we're social beings. I don't think that's a surprise to to any of us uh, here. Uh, we thrive in social dynamics, whether we're introverts or extroverts. You know, there's a necessity that we need as individuals to to be around others in moderation if you're an introvert. <laughs> but, um, you know, we're not, as human beings, we're not meant to be in isolation. And, uh, you know, this is documented well in, uh, in research. You know, those who are often in isolation for long periods of time, uh, sometimes they are susceptible to, to mental, mental health issues. Um, and uh, I think that that, that that goes to show like if if communities weren't there uh, or if we did not have access to the communities that we do, uh, you know, there could be uh, 
several problems that we could uh, encounter along the way. But I, I think one of the reasons why community is so important is because it, it just gives us a sense of belonging and, and purpose. And uh, if you type in our Amazon, uh, some of the top searches for your know, books, for example, that people look up is, you know, what is my purpose? What, hmm. uh, you know, what is, um, what am I, or what am I, who am I? Uh, people are searching for a place of identity and communities give people that, a sense of belonging, um, a, a sense of awareness that, you know, they have someone around them with similar uh, interest, with similar goals, like I mentioned before. And uh, I think this is uh, necessary for all of us to have. So we do need to find a community, whether it's your neighborhood, uh, a professional organization, like um, maybe like an engineering society, uh, you know, something that's connected to your work or your passions. It's just great to have uh, friends or cohorts around you to support you, uh, you know, in this journey of life, because it, it is not easy. And there will be, um, you know, valleys and, and, um, and, and uh, many obstacles that you would need to overcome and a support system around you is what helps you overcome that, which is what was iterated earlier. You may not want to get through life fast, but you want to get as far as you possibly can. And having a community like this, the Conversationalists, uh, I have learned so much from all of you all. And uh, I think this is, uh, it has made me grow as a person and as an individual. And I'm looking forward to sharing that with others. Just, just to go back to something that you said, Jasmine, that I think so important is that when the pandemic hit and and we lost many of our physical communities, what happened? You know, what happened to us? And uh, you know, if you look at what? Oh, well, yeah, <laughs> yes, it did. Which is it did which is to the point. Yeah, yeah, that's that's right because people were looking for some way to connect. They're all in there. You know, everybody's in their home. And then you know, a larger question was, you know, what happened? You know, what happened in schools? And yeah. uh, mm -hmm. you know, from what I can see in every study, they show that not only have you know math and reading and you know academic um, scores gone down, but but there's you know what is it a third of all kids you know 17 or you know and that in teenagers are anxious yeah social anxiety yeah social anxiety is huge in education right now yeah. right and, and uh that you know that just points to this the the why of community why is it important well mm -hmm. you know, all, all, we have yeah. results and it's right and to those to to, to oh, go ahead Mariah. sorry right here i just wanted to chime in and expand on Dr. Jasmine's point of being able to share and grow and expand your community. Because when I think of community, I think of legacy and um, it being the best way possible to be able to live eternally, right? And to be able to connect. And um, my background is actually in molecular genetics. So my bachelor's degree is in mold gen and um, my master's is in health administration. So when we get to talk about um, connectivity and how things are or how we are more powerful together, it's incredible to try to even conceptualize um, what that means like on a molecular level or on um, a psychological level so that we're able to grow in thought, in, um, in conversation, and as a race or as a um, collective. So hmm. I, I appreciate you, Dr. Jasmine, for really actually sharing that with me because it was something that made me come right back home. <laughs> That was really good. Mariah, thank you for that. I also want to say this. Um, why do we have community? If you think about it, everything that you associate with society and humanity is based on uh, us separating ourselves from the default of nature, which is about harmony and overall uh, sort of this zero-ness to it. it. It really has this balance and zero nature uh, and harmony where we have this thing called unity where we actually go toward a certain goal together collectively. And so without, without unity, without community, you would not have society because all of that is about going toward a single goal as a collective small group. 
or a larger and larger group as you go. So everything that you see with business, everything that you see with our society is all because of community and our nature as a human to create this connection and relationship to actually drive a single objective in a single direction. Without that, it would just be nature at a default. Exactly, exactly. Hmm. Yeah, dogs, a, dogs don't have a space program. Yeah, right, right. Can I give a quick case study yes. that really illustrates why community? In the early 1970s, there were a bunch of us who were running focus groups all over the country. Uh, and I was running telephone focus groups. And we all knew of each other. We had heard of each other. None of us had met each other. We were all, we thought, tremendous competitors. And then one day, one of the leading focus group moderators, Judy Langer, invited us all over to her living room. We sat around and we fell in love, eight or 10 or 12 of us, I don't know. We all fell in love with each other. I mean, just literally fell in love with each other. And we, we were still wary. We didn't want to share our secrets. That took about a year to get enough trust. But we started meeting. It's now about a 1,200-person organization worldwide. Um, and we, we taught each other. And the, 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 the core New York group of 12 of us or so were, I, I've got to say, so much better than all the other focus group moderators in the world because we were teaching each other and building on each other's techniques. We were demonstrating techniques on each other. We got so damn good because we were all supporting each other way better than any one of us could, could possibly have been alone. And well, that was such a, such a dramatic, and I have the same thing with magicians. I won't go through the, the whole story of that, but the society of American magicians, international brotherhood of magicians are in the, you know, close to 10,000 each. And we teach each other stuff. Hey, Samantha here. Um, something that I just want to bring to the discussion is talking, this is going to, in a physical world about what happens in community. So from, um, so I'm not sure how, how many of you know this, but your heart actually has a magnetic field to it. It's an, it's an energetic communication. You need with if you are within three feet of another person, you will actually be within each other's cardio electromagnetic communication field. And that actually binds people together and you feel the sense of community because your hearts are actually in the same field together. So that's why um, community when you're with people who are similar or in a even even if you're sharing in a coffee shop, you just shared an experience. You're at Starbucks at the same time, maybe and then within each other's physical range. Now, of course, when you repeatedly, uh, repeatedly around the same people within that three feet, so that's your family often or your friends, you start to, your body remembers that field. So community can happen just by being in presence with others. So what happened with COVID, of course, is we were all had to be six feet away from each other, which is with, without, that's why we were so isolated. Um, we we're not in other people's electromagnetic fields. Did I say that correctly? Oh, the cardio electron, uh, cardio electromagnetic <laughs> Um, fields. And so that's an issue. And that's what we see with um, the world. So that's something that we need to reenact. And that's why we kind of have this like in love with people when we spend a lot of time close to them. So what's important here from all of that, um, obviously, maybe some of you will have some time to think about the, the the ramifications of what that means in your life. But it's important to choose who you spend that time with, because you will automatically be bonded to those people. So you want them to be value aligned. You want them to be, you want mm -hmm. those to be reciprocated relationships. Because if, um, if you're constantly giving and other people aren't, you will be connected to them because it's, it's an automatic physical community. And if you think back to tribal times, I mean, or even to countries where people are extremely close together, North America, we don't have that as much. But if you go to Asian countries and in India, you'll see this sense of community is much stronger because they sleep in the same rooms together. Parents sleep with their children. You know, in North America, babies don't even sleep next to their parents, which is more than three feet away. And we wonder why there's anxiety. Um, so just keeping that in mind that if you want good mental health, you want community, which you do, we all know is really important. Ideally, you need to be within three feet of the people you love. 
Um, how we can replicate that in an online world, I'm sure some AI and Jasmine in a different conversation may have some ideas about some ways we might be able to replicate that in an online world. Um, however, I just wanted to bring that up, that community has a, mm. a huge physical sense to it, and we can't discount it, even though a lot of us are in love with online community. Right. And the other side of that is, if you want to, if, if you want to torture somebody, a, a prisoner, the worst torture is 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 uh, solitary confinement. And cement, yes. right? It's, it's manipulation too. It's how, um, yeah. it's how people isolate. Yeah. Yeah, and it's also, I think right now, an incredible time <laughs> to actually acknowledge blockchain technology and the fact that there is. A navigation system right or some form of technology that offers a peer-to-peer -peer transaction and connection and it's really important that we also understand that whatever we want to call it right spiritual molecular um energetic field that is actually over encompassing and involved in every human being and our engagements so that is also connected to the technology we use and i think it's mm -hmm. really that we actually understand the power of blockchain and why it's so important um, as you build your community, how things are immutable, right? Just how Samantha said these things, you're bonded to that person. Um, and it, it's just an incredible, <laughs> incredible connection and intersection of mm -hmm. all things great, right? As long as we know how to navigate it. Gia here. I, I think I think what everyone is saying from what Dr. Jasmine said, from what Samantha said, from what Daryl said, and, and the rest of you as well, it goes back to the ancient say, saying, it takes a whole village to raise a child. Each one, teach one. And this has been an ancient saying because it's embedded the, the importance of community in our lives. Because it starts with our children. And how can we do that? It's through community, through raising you know, the village is raising their child. That's how important the community is. And now with technology, with the research that Samantha just um, talked, just told us about, that links that as well. With what Dr. Jasmine mentioned as well, with what Daryl said. And when it comes to technology nowadays, there is nothing more intimate. There is nothing more pure and genuine than someone's voice in your ear. Mm -hmm. so Ooh, through... We're going to get to that later too, Gia. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I just so want to say think, one thing, if I could, before to so, go back to. So I think. Sorry, Tia. Uh, okay. Uh, no, no, no worries. So I think that as humans, although we are isolated in so many different ways, the pandemic, the pandemic itself, was the worst isolation that humankind has gone through through since the beginning of time. And humans still managed to overcome that, still managed to find ways to still connect, to still be together in a community. And I, I've seen it. It has never been visible to my eyes how people were so connected together, yet so isolated at the same time. And it's just magical to watch. And people have found ways through that. So community, why we need community, it just goes back to it takes a whole village to raise a child. Gia, can I just add to that before Rose jumps in here because it's relevant? Uh, I think one way that some people are substituting community, um, I mean, a lot of what we're talking about is the positives, but a way that you can kind of substitute some of that is the um, boom of pets, having pets, because with a pet, you are in very intimate within three feet of your pet all the time. And uh, actually a lot of people, especially in North America, are closer to their pets than they are to humans. And some of that has to do with that energetic sensitivity and empathy, as well as that heart mind sync that you get within three feet. So it can be very powerful for treating people with anxiety and loneliness. Um, and sometimes what that does is it fulfills their need for community because they have it so much with their pet that they're less likely. It could be that they're less likely to seek it in humans because they're already getting that. Um, they're already getting those endomorphins and all of those those things that we get from um, human interaction. So that's a case for you, is, uh, Jason, is why pets have been very powerful, especially mm -hmm. during the pandemic. When, oh yeah, we we talk about that all the time on the science science podcast with uh, research based evidence. Yeah, yeah. Rose. Well, what I want to say uh, is that I don't think you know this three foot rule is 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 the absolute because I will say from personal experience that I have had four babies, and 
I did not let them sleep in my bed. And when I had them as in, when I had twins, we decided one day, okay, we're going to let them sleep in the bed and we're going to get up, you know, every few hours. And, but, but I couldn't sleep because every minute I was listening to their breath and, you know, what was, and, and I could put them in another room on the other end of the hall. And I knew when one of them was up and needed to be fed. My husband, on mm -hmm. the other hand, no. <laughs> so anyway, <laughs> I, he could sleep the whole night and mm -hmm. he, he proved that to me. My first uh, daughter, he said, I'll change your diaper. And I woke up in the morning and her whole crib was wet and he just forgot to put on the diaper. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> so anyway. I'd like to I'd like to see the three foot research. I'm, I'm, I'm skeptical of it. But yeah, I, I, I hate to. Be, it doesn't I, have to be. talking uh, about the electromagnetic. Right. It's a bio, it's an it's a it's a right. it's a magnetic field that you give off. It doesn't mean that you can't have community past three. I'd people. like to see more. Send I'd like it to, to see you. more I'm, evidence. I'm sure. Gia here. It's Thank like you. when you say it's like when you say I like this person's vibe or I don't like this person's vibe. It's it's we emit energy. Our bodies emit energy and 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 chemical reactions that people smell mm -hmm. that we don't smell it, but it's your brain can smell it. So it's it's this kind of vibe. We call it right. vibe on the in the okay. streets. <laughs> so it's the yeah, vibe but that's that an analogy. That's not a that's yeah. not a pr proof of anything. But you know, uh, before we go on to to how to build a community, I would like to throw a little damper on this whole thing. The I think community is a very mixed bag, and I have quite contradictory or mixed feelings about it. Community can be very dangerous. Community has some terrible things associated with it, or can. Groupthink, peer pressure, mob rule, all kinds of stuff come from groups. So there's a lot of really bad things that, that can happen. Some terrible things can get reinforced. Cults form. Judgment goes out the window. So... Um, and people and many people use communities as a substitute for thinking. They just go along with whatever the, the community they want to belong to and want to have reinforced. They just go along with those beliefs and they get their dopamine hits from it. And it's a very dangerous situation. So communities should be approached, I think, with a great deal of caution. They are unbelievably beneficial and unbelievably destructive. Yeah, I don't think they that's are, a, this is Jason. Form. I don't think that's a damper, George. I think that's just being real with what we see in the world, right? Yeah, I, I agree with you. Gia, yeah, this is the um, just sorry, Gia, uh, just for time, we do need to keep moving the conversation. I, I so apologize that we could continue this section, but there's a couple things we got to get to before we get to the Q&A. So just as the host, I'm so sorry, but we are going to move on to the next question. Um, Daryl, go ahead. Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's important at this stage to talk about how do we build a community because uh, having real tactical tips on how to build a community that is strong is very important. Uh, if you look at uh, any of these big tech companies, whether you like it or not, they are a community. Uh, right. The way that Apple operates, the way that Google operates, there's such an alignment to their sets of products that is community. So I just want to throw it out here to the group. How do you build a community, whether you're doing things online or commercially, how do you build a community that is strong and long lasting? Well, I think this is a great question, Daryl. This is Mariah speaking, I'm up of marketing. And I wanted the room to know that the first point of action as you build anything, especially a community or someone to come with you along the way, is to actually share what it is that you actually value, what it is your principles are, what it is that you stand for, what you care yes, about. Yes, yes, yes. Um, all of these things actually have to be known so that your community can find alignment. Without that, then you're essentially falling into the scope of what George spoke about, right? You're going in danger zones. You're not allowing for maybe the best possible circumstances to even have access to what Samantha spoke to in terms of our cardio electric magnetic field, right? So I think it's important that you first initially make it 
sure of your own mind as to what it is your values are, what it is that you are staying principled to, what you are actually willing to advocate for and defend and speak about and so on and so forth, because without that, you'll never be able to find the community that's aligned. Mm -hmm. Well said. Yeah, purpose and values. Go ahead, Dara. Well, I was just going to say, who's, uh, who would we like to jump in next? Oh, I think purpose and values, this is George, purpose and values. Um, you need to really state a clear purpose. What, what's the community for? And what are your common values? And the uh, two great examples of that, you can Google it, as uh, Stephen Caggiano says, use the Google machine. Um, the... Uh, uh, you, 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 Amazon and and Google both have incredible purpose statements and value statements. It's not an accident that they became the companies they became because they had a common set of principles. Uh, Ray Dalio's company, I forgot the name of his company, but the guy who wrote Principles is another good example. If you and and I I have I have focus grouped. I don't know, hundreds of corporate statements, almost all of them are total bullshit. But there are a few exceptions. Don't just look at, you know, purpose statements are usually hammered out by a committee mm -hmm. and they are completely the, the void of any, any stands and any real values. Uh, but there are a few notable exceptions like those. Um, and I, I think that's what, that's what you really, the purpose of this community is this is our mission. This is what we're doing. This, right. this is what we'll go to the wall for. Right. That's Ex what you need to state. Exactly. I think it's Mariah again. I think, George, yes, exactly that. And more so that you have to set the intention because as yep. you're the community and as we want to, you know, really get into the neurosism and molecular genetics of all things right you want to make sure that that energy or that passion that purpose that intention is actually set forth initially like i said otherwise you're leaving yourself susceptible to attract god knows what so i think that's really important i'd like to redirect just for a second to, to see how this applies really to social audio and maybe how you use social audio as a hub to create more community inside your, your traditional social audio. If we could bring it back to that, I would really appreciate that. Oh, yeah. Hi. I, I'd be glad to address that. Uh, with uh, As a journalist and when I created Women to Follow, I find that, you know, yes, you define what you do, but you set the example. So in my naming women and asking other women to name three women or more, and building a list, you know, building a Twitter list, building, you know, people will, uh, at, at, you know, s send me, hey, Rose, did you see this? I, I don't know them aside from them following me on Twitter. But but you're building a community. And when uh, I had my one year anniversary show, you know, so many people wished me, you know, well and, and congratulated me. And I don't have a community per se, you know, on Twitter, you know, which we know is problematic now but you know a community is more than uh saying you're a community and stating your your purpose and you know what a corporation does a community is the people who you connect with and who connect with you and support you mm -hmm. and what you give back to them you know what do you as a community leader or leader on on social media give back to your community Exactly. And we can use social audio to actually share that give back, right? To make those initial connections, to introduce ourselves, to let our voices be heard, the the actual um, transfer, right, of energy itself in our vocal cords. I wish AC was up here. She joined us a few weeks ago. Um, she's actually a, a life coach and specializes in using your vocal cords to connect and open up your frequencies. So very interesting. Social uh, uh, Rose made me realize that, um, you know, you, it, a community doesn't have to necessarily be formed intentionally. You can, as Rose implied, you can have an incredible idea and just put that idea out there, especially on spaces. 
and the community will find you and form itself. And that really happened to me with mind skills. I think it's an incredible idea whose time has come and I'm just putting it out there and some people get it and some people don't. And the ones who get it get very excited by it. They, you know, and we formed a community, but not for any intention of forming a community. Yes, absolutely. Um, I, I think, you know, to just piggyback on this, uh, this thread of uh, maybe even using social audio, but, um, you know, unintentionally building spaces can also be done very well through storytelling. I think we talked about this maybe a, a few uh, weeks ago, but the power of just, you know, telling your story in an authentic way, it really connects you to other people emotionally and uh, connects those people with you that can um, just at least see things from your perspective and understand, you know, what your values are, uh, you know, from that. So I would advocate, you know, just doing a form of storytelling. <laughs> in the web three space uh, and I, from what I've seen at least and people actually uh, support and surround each other in that way. Um, another technical way to, I mean, I don't know if it's technical, but some ways to uh, be inspired to build a, a community can also be parallel to uh, what we know as, you know, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Uh, if you can form a community that you know, has uh, that ability to be safe or it supports your safety and that belonging and uh, can facilitate uh, your self-esteem and self-actualization, that's where, you know, people really thrive in those environments. And uh, to just really push social community as well, uh, having a, a, a social setting or an environment where each individual feels inspired towards some direction, uh, they have the ability to connect with others uh, quite easily and feasibly uh, through various modes of communication. And uh, every member has the ability to achieve something. I believe those three uh, cornerstones, uh, inspiration, connection, and achievement, is what really drives a community forward uh, or towards a direction and allows it to thrive and grow over time. Now, again, that could be flipped in um, the reverse direction that George mentioned earlier, where this is, you know, turned into a, a, a bad thing and maybe possibly can be converted to something like a cult. Uh, but, you know, I think with... Um, with safety in mind that we mentioned earlier uh, and having that sense of belonging and where everyone's needs on the basic level are met. It's, it's really, uh, you know, a matter of building a community in the, in the right way. So I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing how that thrives over time. Mm -hmm. You haven't heard from Samantha. Samantha, do you have anything to add or Gia? Um, I'll go. Um, Gia here. One of the things that people um, don't realize when, when it comes to building community is that as the leader of a community, this is your responsibility, is that this is this is a responsibility of a lot of people that come into, to you looking for direction, looking for um, insight, looking to connect for, with people. And when it comes to, there are two ways to do this. There's the paid community and there's the free community. So one of the things that leaders fall into is called the, the trap of the the leader, the, the community leader, they feel that the, it's their responsibility that they have to be there all the time, that they have to um, be there. But that, again, goes back to something that George mentioned, which is the purpose, the purpose, the mission and the vision. I have seen communities where and I built communities with tens and thousands of people and the community is running itself is self-sufficient. It's self-sufficient. It runs itself because it was built upon a strong foundation purpose, mission, and goals. So it's one of the things that you have to clarify for yourself as someone who is going to start this community, intentionally or unintentionally. When you come into the digital marketing space or the social audio space or any kind of medium where you connect with other people, be it social media or, or any other any kind of medium, you have to define your purpose, your values, principles, what's for you, what's not for you, who are your people who are not your people. And mm -hmm. with that, the right people will follow you. And that's how unintentionally you formed a group of community who are aligned with your purpose, your values, and your mission. Now, when it comes to intentional community building and intentional community creation, this is where it comes to as paid communities and free communities. Now, when you're building a community, as a leader it's yourself, 
you have to define what's what's in it for you. Why are you here and what do you need from the people? If it's something that is going to be, if you feel the pressure that you have to be there all the time, then this is not a community. This is a course. A mm-hmm. community is self-sufficient and it will run itself when it's built on a strong foundation. So when people understand what this is for and what's the goal of this community, is it to, to reach a specific goal? Is it to discuss our struggles? Is it to help us with mental? Whatever the goal is, you have to be very very specific and the goal can grow with the community because you don't want a community a community that is built on a strong foundation will not outgrow the people the people will not outgrow it either because yeah. because they will grow with it they they will grow the community and the community is such a beautiful thing to watch it will just morph and shift into how the wave of the people is just mo- moving it and it's just so beautiful to watch. And I have seen it so, so many times. So when you're building in a community, what is your intention behind this community? Is it to make money? Then you have to be clear from the beginning. This is a community to make money. And there will be A, B, C, and D to raise funds for this community to do A, B, C, and D. Mm-hmm. If it's not to raise money, it's for a collective of people to be together. Then it has to be specified as such. And sometimes... Communities, who, which is a, a, gl- a group of people, something that um, George mentioned earlier, I was going to say it's the art of conformity. So yes. it's communities are an art of conformity. What kind of conformity it is, that's something that is going to be defined by the people if there isn't a strong, a strong leadership in the community. And that's the danger side of building communities is that when, when the group of people conform and the leader loses control of the the group or the community they're building yeah very great points uh let's let's save more for later in the conversation Gia but uh literally Jason I don't think we needed to show up Gia's got so much knowledge on this whole thing I think we (laughs) could have literally literally all shut our mics off she was amazing uh one Mm -hmm. last uh just check with Samantha did you have anything quick to add and then we'll toss it back to Jason yeah I think Gia added very well from a leadership position um, and being a leader of a community, I resonated with what a lot of what she said. But what I want to talk about is more like most people in here aren't leaders of communities if, that are in the group. A lot of us are part of communities. Um, or if we are a leader, we're still a part of another community. And something that I want to caution everyone in the room about in the space today is that when you're part of a community, you will not value a line 100% with, your, with the leadership. And that could be a team leadership. And what I see often is like, they don't agree with this one thing. And so because they don't value align with that one thing, they think they can't be in the community at all. And I want to say as a leader, it's very tough as a leader to have someone come to you and say, but they put a lot of pressure on you too. They're just like, well, they try to get you to change. And that's what I've had as a leader. It's like, you need to, you need to value align with me as a member on this one thing, or I can't really be under, I can't be with this community. And it is impossible for you ever to value align 100% with your leadership. And so Mm. you need to, obviously you need to have what's what I call non-negotiables. It's like a marriage in a marriage. There's non-negotiable value alignments. And there are other things that you're just not going to value align with. My husband and I have that all the time. There's certain things that we just, sometimes we just avoid talking about it because we both get our backs up with a completely different view of how to, how the, the values on a certain things. But, on the non-negotiables, we value a line. So I just want to say to all of you that in relationships, we're much more tolerant to people in some ways than we are in communities. So mm-hmm. please, when you are part of a community, remember, you don't have to value a line with everything else. And remember that it's not okay to pressure your leaders to value a line with you 100%. Um, and so that's just something I wanted to just add to the conversation. I love that you added that, right. Samantha. Yeah, that's great. Mm-hmm. This is Jason before. uh, Yeah. um, If we're talking about how to build a community, it's something that my account uh, with my wife's help, we've really tried and we've resonated with people just based on our engagement and the size of our account. Um, Folks come to us for a sense of community and what, I guess, how you build that. It depends, I think, on what your goals are, as everybody has said. And what I found is that people feel like they belong in a community when they have a say or a respected. You don't necessarily have to agree on everything. You don't necessarily have to 
see eye to eye. Like in the pet community, there's people, for example, just one, <laughs> not to get bogged down in pet stuff. Um, some people think raw food is the best way to feed a dog. Some people think kibble is the best way to feed a dog. Um, some people think you can, and it's true, you can set up a vegan um, diet to feed a dog. But it, all of that are just varying perspectives of the love of dogs. And while people can share those differing opinions, at the end of the day, we're all connected by one thing. And as long as the leaders of the community, as people so aptly put, have those goals, but also have guidelines and certain sets of norms that this isn't allowed here. You're not allowed to talk like that to people. You can disagree and you can respectfully disagree, but you're not allowed to put people down. You're not allowed to call names. You're not allowed to shame. So for us, mm -hmm. that's, I think the empathy part of our brand and the empathy part in any community is cr critical in, in that my goes opinion. back to the psychological safety. Yeah. I was going to say that George. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. 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 And and uh, I was just gonna. I, I was about to say something like you. You. You just said, uh, Jason. But I think you have to honor the people in your community and mm -hmm. listen, because then you know it's more like a dictatorship. I'm the leader. Here are the rules. And, and unless you embrace the community, which means listening to the community, which which sometimes I find and problematic on social media. Mm -hmm. You know, somebody sets. A, you know, says this is the community. And you can't post this. You can't post. This. I'm not talking about anything that is, uh, you know, uh, hate hateful. But you have to be open. I mean, that's how I am as a mm -hmm. person. You mm -hmm. have to listen to people, or otherwise, you know, your community is in danger of dying. Right. right. To Rose's yeah. point, I think that you you need to go beyond that. You need to not only be listening, but you need to demonstrate that you're listening. They need to know you're listening. So you need to say things like, you know, we have the we have this suggestion that many people are proposing. Uh, I am not going to do that. And here's why I'm not going to do that. But I've heard you uh, here and, and I've heard your reasons. They are this, this and this. So they know that you, you got you yeah. got it. Exactly. And then you say. And we're not going to, I made an executive decision here. We're not going to do this. We're going to do that. And then, then people can say, can feel heard. Okay. At least I got my pitch in. I, yep. I made my case and it didn't work fine. And I don't feel that way, by the way, from the Twitter spaces, people, I have made a gazillion suggestions. And so have a lot of us here and I don't feel heard. I never felt heard from the spaces community. Uh, from the spaces people at Twitter. And so I never felt it was a spaces community, or at least the community that I belonged to as far as Twitter was concerned. I thought they were enormously unresponsive. Well, at least now they are definitely going to be unresponsive. Or yeah. non-existent. Yeah. I'm going to be uh, so And I have, mixed, I have mixed feelings <laughs> about that because I don't think that they were, they, I don't think their rate of innovation was high. I don't think their rate of their mm -hmm. communication was good, et cetera, et cetera. So I've got very, I like a lot of them personally, but um, I got mixed feelings about it. Hmm. Gia, Gia here. You mentioned, you and Rose, uh, George and Rose mentioned something really, really important is that the role of the leader or the mods of a, of a community, when you're building a community, it's your responsibility as the leader and as the moderators or as the leaders that were empowered by the other leaders of the community is that you ensure the safety of your community. And there's a very yep. thin line between canceling someone in your community and letting them feel hurt and at the same time implementing the rules and the standard of procedure in your community. So there is a very thin line and honest, honestly from my experience that comes with experience. That yeah. comes with you as a leader. How to make sure your members are heard and at the same time exactly like Samantha mentioned sometimes you know what we just can't provide that in this community but we hear you we're here for you and this is what we have and this is what we can do with yeah. what we have so this yeah, is something Samantha, that every yeah. leader that needs to yeah sorry Gia but I'm just agreeing with you in the background my mic has to be on for the multicast I'm so sorry yeah <laughs> <laughs> So before we get to folks from the audience, I'm going to pose this in a lightning round to all of our team members, all of our speakers. If you could sum up what social audio has done for you personally in your community, 
I'd love to know. And as this is a lightning round, I'll let you think about it while I share my couple sentences. Is like think about what social audio has done positively to build a sense of community. So for me personally, we run two audio shows a week, Science Chat and Pet Chat, and bringing voices of scientists but also pet lovers together is has supercharged the feeling of inclusive inclusivity with all of our followers. And in, I don't think they're followers anymore. They are members of our community. And there's a big difference between somebody that follows us for, oh, that's a cute picture of Bunsen and Beaker, to somebody that posts and responds and shows up and shares their opinions, advice, and stories. So for us, that's what social audio has done. Mm. You're a great example. <laughs> so, yes. uh, yeah, how you've built community. I'm, I'm, I'm thinking of going back and seeing, you know, your progression. <laughs> tell us, tell us your uh, success story. Uh, I'll, I'll comment, and uh, I think, I think for me, you know, community that on social on social audio is is building, uh, you know, friendships and connections with people, and my uh, call to action, which is, you know, to amplify the, you know, uh, women's voices is respected. And so that when I, this week, uh, did a show with uh, uh, an author of a book called Shadow Network, which is a political book about the infiltration of the radical right in the U.S., uh, as soon as a professor from Siena who investigates uh, you know, uh, has a, a show called Kremlin File. Was like, oh my God, how did you get her? And and then she said, you know, that her book was groundbreaking. And I said, well, how was it groundbreaking? Because it's not my particular field. And then she told me. And then she said, well, ask her these questions. Oh, and then she apologized, like I'm a, I'm saying too much. And then she joined, you know, this show from Italy. So you know, that's part of having a community that people are excited. People want to hear what you have to say. People want to hear what others in your community have to say. And, and that's, I think, a strong basis for, for building community. Thanks, Rose. To everybody else mm -hmm. on the team, social audio, but uh, how social audio helped your community? I Do think, you... um, uh, there's a Daryl with the dashes yeah. here. Um, I, I think with wisdom, it's very interesting because really the entire platform is your community. Um, because you don't really have groups, per se, like you do on Twitter Spaces and on Clubhouse. Um, however, it's very interesting because if you have, you know, a lot of followers or you have one follower, you kind of have the same, ex the same reach, as we like to call it in the business, because you're in that uh, swiping through uh, regardless. So um, it's a different approach that I have on Wisdom. But uh, it, it has been really great for me because uh, a lot of these people, uh, we've reached out and talked offline, and they've actually been involved with uh, my business and things like that. So, mm. Go ahead, Gia. Um, Gia here. Thanks. Uh, one of the things that Social Audio taught me about community and helped me to build a community is authenticity. Uh, is connecting with people, and it also helped me fulfill my purpose and my passion, which is provide access to technology and information globally, especially to those who cannot attain it, especially to those who have been restricted by governments, by politics, etc. With social audio, I have been able, with Decoded with Gia show at the decodedwithgia.com, I've been able to provide that to a lot of people and that expanded my reach as well. That's all. Mm -hmm. I could shine now. It's Mariah here. Um, for me, social audio has done a lot for me introspectively. So I used to have a really big problem about speaking outwardly, um, about maybe even self-advertisement, right? But I had no problem getting on a stage and talking about said company or whatever client I had and so on and so forth. So personally for me, social audio has given me the platform and the opportunity to get a lot more comfortable in myself so that now I'm even stronger as a leader, as a community developer, as a programmer, as an, 
educator, marketer, whatever you want to call it, um, in order to connect and grow and build with my community. So I think there's a lot to be said about speaking out loud, hearing your own voice, um, hearing your own recordings of your voice, right? There's so many layers to social audio that actually enhance you as a person personally that I think everyone should be involved in regardless of where they are in building community it's the best way to build the community within yourself right because now these internal conversations that we once had are now being revealed and exposed or really processed and synthesized so that we can build a better community within ourselves to grow outside of ourselves. So I think that social audio is absolutely a pivotal and monumental piece of technology that is doing exactly what Gia spoke to in creating a more accessible way for us to transfer and share this information and connect with each other. Mm -hmm. Samantha here. I'm just building on what uh, Dr. Jasberry was saying too, is that I think there's a reciprocation of development that goes that's been going on because of the social audio. I mean, sometimes there's been spaces that I've been in and the DMs have been insane, you know, like how impactful some timely um, love, care, advice, Mm -hmm. uh, listening has been. And then I would say the same thing for me as well, just listening to someone going, oh, I really needed to hear that or I was able to build on it or got me unstuck from something. I definitely social audio is a place to feel less lonely in the head, especially it's a place of meeting minds and hearts. And so I think that for like for me personally, this ability to um, connect with people all over the world with diverse backgrounds, sometimes to learn from them and sometimes to take what I know so that they can build on build into their lives and have a a better, better life. Sometimes I talk about empowering others to be extraordinary, but I also feel that other people helped empower me to be extraordinary. So it's definitely a reciprocated community and benefit for self-development and professional development. And on a scalable, on a massive scalable level, that is just, it's so profound, the ripple effect, actually. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Truly. (laughs) Wow. Go ahead, George. For me, I think it's a... um, in a single word, it's a laboratory. What's a laboratory? A safe place to try new things. Hmm. Right? I think you'll agree with that, Jason. That's yes. what a laboratory is. It's a safe place to try new things. Well, well so it's depending w- on my laboratory, maybe. <laughs> maybe it's not so safe. Right. <laughs> right. But uh, you get the point. Th- yeah. Th- that I can experiment and I can learn how to explain things more succinctly and tightly and clearly and simply and all of that stuff. I came from a back academic background with several degrees and I was taught ac- academic speak. All my friends, uh, all of our friends, my wife and I friends are all psychologists, psychiatrists and social workers. Um, they are, they don't, they look at me when I talk about mind skills, they look at me like I came down from another planet because they're all pathology oriented they, they think that the issues that I deal with are marginal issues in psychology, and I think they're the central issues of psychology. But in putting it out there here in spaces in particular, I have attracted a whole bunch of PhD psychologists and other people who get it, and I get that they get it, and it's, it's extremely validating, and it's extreme, it really helps me with the language. I explain things all completely differently than I explained things a year ago. And because it's my own, my own private focus groups and other kinds of laboratories, I can do a little teaching and see that the people get it. What are their questions? You know, I can, I can do open things like mind skills coaching. What's on your mind? What's going on with you? What are you frustrated about? Name a problem. And people name problems and issues that I never would have thought of, embarrassment and things like that. There are issues that I never would have thought of that they bring up and that I can now address. So it's just shaping me up very fast. Yes, uh, so much um, 
profound statements have been said already. Uh, you know, I'm only going to maybe just provide my my own personal anecdotes here for how the audio. Oh yes, thank you. I told you you, you <laughs> have to remind me. <laughs> this is Dr. Jasmine. Um, uh, so yeah, this is a, you know coming from a scientist's point of view. Uh, you know, George, I, I definitely want to say I love your definition for a laboratory, a safe place to explore new things. I you know I I think I'm going to take that and run with it eventually. Give you credit, of course, but you know. No, steal it, steal it, steal it. It's not. It's not. I mean, if you look it up in the dictionary, that's what the dictionary is going to say. So go ahead. A safe, sorry. Uh, well, safe place to explore reckless things. I think that's what we can probably <laughs> no, reckless do things. That's a good. That's an yeah. addition. I didn't say that, but I love it. Only because you know I work in the AI space and I know what yep. people would want to work on and uh, reckless. Yeah, reckless. <laughs> um, and you know, that's in a good kind of sense. Of, in a good sense. In a in a good sense, absolutely. And that's what I've kind of seen. Uh, you know, when I started social audio, I mean, when I first got on Twitter, my main goal was to connect with other scientists and re researchers, which is amazing. I mean, there's a, a huge community of of, of the, those personnel here on Twitter. And, um, you know, then it took a step further with social audio, but in an interesting way where I get to connect with people who have opinions and thoughts on the science being conducted who are not actually scientists and researchers. And that was, you know, really an eye opener for me. Because I've always held the belief that you know science shouldn't be held back uh, or disconnected from the the people who it will impact in the future. And you know one thing I noticed is that you know talking with uh, people outside of you know the AI science space, uh, people who may be part of the general public who are concerned about maybe robots taking over, is that you know <laughs> they talk a lot more about ethics, mm -hmm. believe it or not, than some of the programmers and designers who are building these applications. And, you know, this this space of social audio really just, um, it, it, it's set in stone for me what's, what's really necessary for us to, to engage with as a, as a researcher and ensure that we are meeting those, mm. um, those ethical points or uh, we are meeting those standards yeah. that people expect us to have uh, since we are designers of the tech that is to come. And we can mm -hmm. provide a pipeline for people to voice their concerns and for them to, you know, tell us what's what's uh, what's bothering them about, you know, some of the the science that's being put out there today. And social audio was a great place to build a community around that. And yeah. I just want to ensure people that, you know, there is a lot of room for that growth to take place, especially with social audio, because we do hear the voice impact, like Mariah mentioned earlier, voice impact of how this could influence um, uh, certain individuals. And I love what Mariah mentioned earlier as well, which is like how to build a community internally within ourselves. And I think this this social audio space is a great option for us to put a mirror in front of ourselves to really realize yeah. what our values are, what our beliefs mm. are. Because mm -hmm. in the social audio space, I guarantee you'll find someone who's going to be contesting that or who will try to contest it. And this is your opportunity to reinforce who you are what you're about, what you stand for, and then we can continue to build our identities on top of that and surround us, surround ourselves with people who mm -hmm. uh, could either identify with that or who could either, you know, support that in a way that pushes us forward. I have a question. I have a question for Jasmine or anybody else who'd like yes. to jump in. Are you fine? I'm embarrassed to ask the question, but are you finding uh, your friends? a little more dull in comparison to the people you're meeting in spaces? Like, uh, oh God, I'm seeing some emojis. <laughs> I, 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 let me expand on that for a second. I yeah. visited two friends last night, two dear friends. I love them. And I found them incredibly dull, especially when the, when the, um, when, when the conversation turned to AI, I, I literally said to myself, geez, I'd rather be talking to Jasmine Barry than, <laughs> than, the, than these people. You know, I've been on the phone with Jasmine yeah. and other a bunch of other people discussing AI. Now, I don't want to lecture them on AI, but God, they, they were so ignorant of the whole subject and they were dull. <laughs> wow, that's new new for me to hear. Wow. Well, I know I have my friends. We talk about various topics. And, well, you talk about your friends and, right. Yeah. But, I'm but not, they're, I'm they're not, informed I'm about AI, AI and your friends are informed with AI because... Yeah, because they hang around you that personally. But <laughs> I will say that, you know, I do get something from social audio that I, you know, I don't get from my friends, which is, you know, diversity of thought. 
um, in a lot of ways. And, um, you know, I think that could be expanded within my friend circle. But, you know, with Twitter, you can just hop online with someone who's on the complete opposite ends of the world who grew up completely different from you. And that is what I welcome. Uh, hmm. So it, it does give me an opportunity or social audio specifically gives me something to to reach out to and to experience that, uh, you know, I don't necessarily resonate with from the outset, but eventually over time, we learn to make associations and relationships based on our common interests. Hmm. Dr. Barry, love from it. Anybody else? But... Oh, yeah. Um, uh, uh, George, sorry, we're going to go to the Q&A. That is sure. a great question you posed. Sure. Um, and I wish I thought of it. I wish that was one of the questions we I, had for the show. Um, I, I, maybe another one. I hey, thought of it a, as Jasmine yeah, was talking. I mean, yeah, yeah, that was a, but, that would be a half an hour discussion right there. So yeah. we're in the Q and A sure. section of the conversationalists. I'm running a rather tight timeline today. We are ten minutes over where we normally where I was hoping to be, and that's okay. So the Q and A section will last until ten forty. And then we have a relatively hard stop. So we're going to invite folks that are in the audience to ask questions or share their own ideas or experiences with community. The only thing I ask is that try to keep your questions and or stories brief. We only have 20 minutes. So as you're just as you're coming up, think about how can I be somewhat concise to get my point across? Pithy, the other thing pithy. is pithy. George's term pithy. The other thing is. If our co-hosts and myself don't recognize your account, you have a locked account or we just don't trust what you're going to say, you're not going to be able to come up. You can, of course, post stuff in the chat. So uh, that's just to keep this space relatively safe and I don't have to boot out trolls. Um, so we're going to bring Jennifer up and then uh, David, D sorry, Diane. And I, uh, Bez, you had been requesting, so come on up here when you got to have a chance. Um, we may run out of speaker space, and if that's the case, uh, maybe some of the conversationalists can drop down. And conversationalists, if you need to go, uh, you, you, you may go. Um, I'd love for you to stick around till 1040, but the time, I mean, it's a Saturday. So Jennifer, go ahead, and then we'll go to Diane. As someone who is also a fellow community developer and a member of communities, I think one of the challenges is when is it time for a community to to let go of a community? And I, I'm curious how, because mm. we've all experienced this, right? I have. Where either mm. I'm the organizer of it and I see that it's kind of dying on the vine and I've done all the things that would normally go. But sometimes communities are for a season. They're not forever. And no, recognizing that to me has been a very freeing and knowing that it served its purpose it's, it helped everyone. It helped me. It was wonderful. It was great. But now that season has passed. And I'm curious how any, uh, it, I know we only are limited on time. So maybe if one or two of the conversationalists wants to ask or answer that question, I just would love to know how others have approached it. Well, in my experience, communities usually last six seasons in a movie. Ha ha. Hmm. That's a, <laughs> that's a niche joke from the TV I, show. I okay. Some of you got it. Okay. Never mind. I think something that's important hmm. to do is just to thank the people and even just thank your heart, I guess, in a way, it's almost like thanking the universe for the role that those people had in your life, that with the learning opportunities and the part of the journey that you, sh your life journey that you share together. And there's a bit of a grief that can happen. With well, there always is grief that happens with it. Um, and so I think that acknowledging all of those and going through that process is really important to just think, think the learning as well as um, grieve what needs to be grieved. I'm going to say that uh, sometimes environmental situations change the entire situation that you started the community based on. So you have to give yourself first forgiveness that it may have been, may not been your fault that it sort of died on the vine. It may mm -hmm. have been uh, some sort of, you know, political, social, cultural type of change. The other thing is, is sometimes you've said everything that needs to be said and you can pretty much close the books, <laughs> you, do, you know, and archive it because there's really nothing more to be said in. How many times do you have to say the same thing in different ways? Um, so that's my point. I'll Diane, just say that I, oh, go oh, ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Go oh, ahead. I was just going to say that a, a community can morph into something else. And so uh, I was part of a community that we developed programs for kids in high school to talk about issues. And when a few of us who were leading that community were no longer in the community, the community went on. And, and we sort of uh, bridged the gap between when we left and, and the other leaders took over. But 
but we were still, you know, looking at it and we still were talking among each other. And if we saw something that was really important, we thought to the community that we had helped build, we would share that. So it can morph, but, but it doesn't necessarily die or those connections between and among people don't die. Fantastic. Thank you all. Appreciate it. I'll, I'll jump down so others can come up. Thanks, Jennifer. And uh, by the way, everybody, uh, Jennifer is going to be running next week's show. Jennifer, what's the theme? Just quick before you go. Sure. Uh, the topic is um, the freedom of experimentation and building in public. The title will be a little bit tighter than that, but that's the general gist of it. And I'm really thrilled that uh, Jason and Mariah will be joining me to co-host. So, yeah, you'll look for stuff to come in this coming week. Thanks. Sounds like a lab where Looking you can do experimentation. Yep. <laughs> Thanks, Jennifer. And by the way, Jennifer is one of the members of the Conversationalists. Um, the other thing, before we go to Diane, just quick, uh, we, personally, me, uh, as the uh, leader of the Conversationalists, if you are really involved in social audio, um, I am looking to add a couple people to our roster in the future. So you could DM me um, and then we'll go through some kind of vetting process just while everybody's here listening. Diane, go ahead. Thank you for waiting. Uh, you're welcome. Uh, I I would say, well, I grew up since I was a, a mixed child growing up in a predominantly uh, white community in rural Massachusetts. I kind of got used to going to different groups for different connections or subject matters. So I'd have like one set of friends that I'd end up or one friend I'd talk to about some stuff. And then I'd have another friend that I ended up talking to about other stuff. The same thing happened when I was on active duty in the army. There were some friends that I would go to for one type of like social interaction and another one for a different type of social interaction and being able to like jump that way. I guess I got so used to not having one particular uh, large or small community to go to for all of my uh, various different interests and whatnot. Like there's a, there's like with teenagers, it's kind of hard to talk about like ad advanced psychological terms and the collective consciousness and all that stuff, unless they're really into psychology mm -hmm. and going with, and like on military active duty, it's sort of hard to go talk to, certain guys about you know little girly uh things like sailor moon unless they're a massive anime fan uh that type of thing like with my brother i'm we're we're very so much multiple communities yeah, about we'll multi have, yeah. Uh, you, you can you can you can join it, it's a, an interesting phenomenon you can join them and actually be deeply attached to different communities multiple communities well I at think the same like time I think yeah. that is really speaking to, especially in her perspective being biracial, is that your communities are also part of your identity. And it's also how we're able to best navigate and grow and really manipulate the world that we live in. So mm -hmm. I think that that is an awesome perspective. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Diane, do you, have, yeah. uh, do you have communities now that you're part of? I'm just curious. I have lifelong communities that I've been a part of because I'm an uber nerd and I've been part of fandoms growing up for a long time. Like I've been an, a fan of the TV show The X Files since oh, I, I love was the thirteen. <laughs> I've been a fan of Doctor Who since I was doing my undergrad in uh, uh, UConn when I was twenty two. Um, I discovered Dogma and Red versus Blue. Uh, and uh, um, later on, Ruby, uh, later on. And nice. then I'd have, like, different, so, like, fandoms, so, like, different television shows or movies, so, like, Star Trek, I have my people that I talk to about that. Or um, if I want to talk, like, Battlestar Galactica or Star Wars or comic books or witchcraft or uh, occultism, esotericism, uh, conspiracy theories, uh, uh, uh but like legitimate conspiracy. Oh, somebody nuked the room. Um, unmute everybody. Sorry, if that was me, I'm sorry. If that was me, I don't know if I accidentally touched the mute everybody button. Um, 
I, I do it all the time. It's I'm pretty so easy to hit, Terry. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was me. I really apologize. That's just uh, I can. It was Bunsen, actually. Bunsen. It was. It. it was me. It was me. So oh, there you go. Um, <laughs> accident. Rose fest up. Take her out to the woodshed. <laughs> uh, Diane, Diane, that one. Can, are you okay with your point being getting it across? I'm sorry. There. Uh, we'll just go to the next speaker. Yeah, no, you're 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 good. I I got I got enough of Thanks, what man. I wanted to cross with the, nice. the different mm -hmm. fandoms and everything. So yeah, go ahead. Um, we'll, thank you. We'll go to Noble Ron. Hey, thank Noble. you for letting hey. thank you for letting me speak. Hello, everyone. It's a great Hi. conversation. Uh, I just wanted to say that for myself, I grew up, grown up in a community that I've never really felt embraced by my community. Uh, I live in the South, and for instance, I don't go to church, so that's one strike against me to some people. Uh, two, I don't, I'm not married at my age or have children. That's a strike against me. And even you go so far as to say that I don't vote conservatively, there you go. And, and for a lot of people, it's, it's uh, basically the Twitter spaces and especially wisdom community has embraced me more than my own community that's how i feel mm. so what so what i'm wondering is let's say i didn't have that i hadn't been embraced or I didn't know about social audio what do you suggest to someone of finding a community via social audio gia what do you think <sighs> <laughs> Yeah. Here, I um, can. Can I? Can I? Can I answer this one? Yeah. Well, Darryl. Gia, did Gia, did you have something to say? Um, there? Sorry. I mean, everyone. It's okay. Go ahead, Daryl. Oh, I, I thought I thought you were not sure and you needed more time, but uh, but go ahead if you have it. No, no, no. It's okay. It's okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just going to say to you, Noble Ron, just as somebody that also shares the same space on uh, wisdom with you. Um, I've always said to people, it's really on that particular platform, it's about really setting out a beacon for uh, what you're about. And, you know, you can set your tags and all of that, but the real content and the value of what you're offering is going to kind of wrap the community around you. Um, and the thing is, uh, the wisdom uh, method is sort of, you know, uh, misunderstood sometimes is that before you start a conversation, every single time you grab somebody and get going with somebody is uh, in, communicate to them and DM them and things like that. So the next time you do a talk, you kind of warm up the fires by telling them, hey, we're going to do a talk and things like that. There's there's like no internal newsletter system. There's no scheduling. So on Wisdom, it's a really difficult platform um, to to do that kind of grouping and uh, alerting and notifying and all that kind of stuff. Um, so you have to kind of do do it a bit manually and be really cognizant of the value of what you're putting out there and uh, making sure that uh, you do, you know, the beacon that you want uh, your future four to 10 month uh, followers to, to be really uh, addicted to your content and sticky to what you have to say. Thank you, dear. I appreciate that. Um, Gia here. Um, everything Daryl said is exactly true, but one of the things that I want to ask you is, what do you need a community for? Ooh. Why do well, you see, want to yeah, build Uno this reverse? Right. That's like well, the, the reverse is, card well, in Uno, that's a good Gia. Question. It's a very, very good question. Now, for me, what I've seen and what I constantly try to assess in my mind is with the social audio. And this is fairly new for me. This is since it's one year, since last November. Uh, and I'm wondering in, in my mind, am I, is this satisfying my social needs? I mean, of course, you know, I see friends in the physical world and, but is this, I, I truly believe that it does serve my social, a lot of my social needs. And so the question is, is that, you know, what I'm afraid of, or, or what does it look like to be ostracized from a community, uh, on social audio? I haven't experienced that. I'm, I'm pretty sure that won't happen. But I just wonder if that's, um, you know, if that uh, that's a fear I should, you know, weigh heavily or not. But uh, but yeah, just I, I hear you. Mm -hmm. I, I hear you. And this is a question that I ask to everyone who comes to me is like, I want to start a community. What do I do? 
I want to start a community. I want my people to find me. I want to find these people, but why? But one of the things that, one of the best things about social audio is you can literally use for everything. Look at it as a tool, not as a magnifying glass to your personality. It's a tool that you can use at your disposal for free, available to you, and you have global access to everyone who feels exactly like you, who has their purposes aligned with you, has the same mission, the same feelings that you just communicated with us. So one of the things that you can use social audio for to build your community, use it as a knowledge harvest, use it as a testing area, use it as an experimenting experimenting area, talk about topics that you're interested in, and the right people will stick with you. So when you start a space, let's say like you want to talk about um, something that you're passionate about, and you're really afraid that the right people, the people are just going to judge you and just going to say, oh, no, I, I don't like this dude. And then you'll, because you are looking at it, you're looking at yourself. But you look at the other people. What can you provide to the people? If, if, if it's something that you're worried about, speak about that. Let's say it's imposter syndrome. Let's say imposter syndrome attacks you constantly. Speak about that from your perspective, from your values and your purpose and your mission, okay? And then the right people will connect with you. And then the next week, try something different. Until you are confident in your own voice, you are confident in your element and your potential, and you're, you feel like you're, you will feel it. I promise you, you will feel it. That moment when you know you hit the right spot, you will feel it. And guess what? Everyone around you will feel it too. And that's when they start slowly circling around you and you'll find your people. So experiment. Spaces can be used as a knowledge harvest. I use it as a knowledge harvest. I use it as um, uh, as a test for people, for topics that I want to test in the future, as products as services you can use it in any way you like so just sit down this is your homework first thing you need to do is why why do i need these people around you and what am i looking for what's my purpose and what's my mission and once you have that aligned and what kind of people are you looking for and once you have that on paper and you understand that they will find you i swear to god it's got, it's, be, it's going to become like a magnet you won't even have to do anything you just let your voice do the rest. We're not worthy. We're not worthy. Gia, did you see in the <laughs> chat that Daryl said, I want Gia's brain? <laughs> I mean, I don't I don't think Daryl's a zombie, but um, y'all know why I asked Gia to be on the team of the conversation. Holy smoke. Yeah. yeah. Just a master yeah. class right there. Gia, thank you so much. Uh, Noble Ron, how'd that go? Did you did you get something from that? <laughs> yes. I, well, I made a mistake. I shouldn't have even asked the question. No, I it's just okay. Made my comments because I do feel a part already of a community. I'm not trying to make my own, but her, okay. Gia's answer was lovely, and it was for people that do want to start their own communities. Mm. Um, but I do want to say this about social audio: being able to gather together people that have uh, things in you know like minds, and I have deeper conversations, more significant revelations of my, of myself and of humanity through the spaces and wisdom uh, instead of my own friends in the physical world. So mm -hmm. it's a beautiful thing. And I appreciate you all. I love this. Um, every Saturday is great. Thanks, Ron. So, so Jason, at the beginning of the show, I mentioned this, but and I know um, I am like literally four uh, four away from 20,000 followers Oh, <laughs> and consider, considering the turmoil going on at Twitter, which I don't really want to get into and the possibility that maybe spaces ends up being paused or, Oh no, don't jinx it. I know. Uh, I don't jinx no, it, I know. It's, it's okay. Samantha, go ahead. <laughs> amazing because social audio is how I build community and how I became part of a community in mm -hmm. Twitter. So if I hit 20,000 during this space, it would really be, um, really, really, really touch my heart. So just, I just unfollowed. No, just kidding. <laughs> oh my gosh <laughs> well you know um, anyway, something to be said about hitting those milestones with people you love and who help who's who spent time on a journey together with you that's yeah. part of give all the convers if you found anything from this show today the conversationalists um please give the folks who are speaking a follow including the people that came up to ask great questions there are so many good conversations in the chat as well and uh, all of us as a team, we have access to that and we will respond when we have time. And speaking of time, we are out of it today um, for the folks that came up to ask questions and there are no more requests, so it worked out perfectly. Um, for me as the host of this, 
talking about community, I just want to say from the bottom of my heart to the team members today of the conversationalists, you are a, a community for me. Social audio has allowed our Bunsen and Beaker, this silly science communication account with dogs to expand well beyond just photos and threads and things like that. Um, it's allowed me to have a voice behind the puppets uh, being kind of the puppeteer of the dog. 168,000 followers. Yeah. Whoa. So, <laughs> um, and I want to thank you all for being here to talk about community. It's as Samantha mentioned, there's turmoil at Twitter and we don't know if spaces will be here tomorrow, but what we do know is the community will live on past anything that happens with spaces. Um, I just want to throw to my co-hosts. I just want to throw to my co-hosts. Do you have any closing words before we, we shut her down? And then of course I'll throw to the speakers. Uh, just keep your comments brief as we shut down. I'm just going to uh, add this is Daryl with the dashes. I'm going to say that in 2022, um, your community and the people that align with who you are as a brand or as a community is your digital equity. And the future of that will expand. And as more algorithms and things like that are going to magnetize more people to you than beyond the, the reach and scope that you thought that you had, the future of community um, is forever. And so invest in your community. It is your digital equity. Hmm. Well said, Daryl. Rose, do you have any closing words? Uh, yeah, I guess I would say uh, trust yourself. You know, trust your trust your instincts to go uh, and find people that that resonate with you. And if you know, I would be you know practical level. I I would be expanding where you are on social social audio if you love it. Uh, and uh, you know, make sure that that you have people and that you can find them. So just as you know. <laughs> Um, you know, give each other your emails, make sure you're connected. That's all. It was really, really a great space. I really appreciate everyone, everyone's thoughts and, and so many people for being here that I see. And to our, and to, thanks Rose. Yeah. And to our speakers, any closing words? Samantha here. I'll just say that growing with the right community is bliss. Oh, mm. that's short and sweet and amazing. Samantha, you rock. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Last call, folks. This is real quick. I don't know if you can hear me. Oh, yeah. this is from, uh, you're on Clubhouse. Yeah, go ahead, David. Yeah, I was just saying, um, definitely enjoyed hearing some of this. Yes, I'm coming from Clubhouse. Quickly spoke with Jason, and we're in similar sides here with what's going on in Clubhouse with social audio. We're just invested in our community, so I wanted to say hello to all of you on Twitter spaces and hopefully get to meet you guys soon, at least in some rooms or spaces will be going on um but definitely love social audio and have a lot to talk about in it and just wanted to introduce myself today mm -hmm. with uh, rebecca here right. on clubhouse is my co-host and uh, um love what you guys are doing as well thanks david uh, thanks, thanks for thanks for listening on clubhouse thanks i just wanted to say this is the first time in human history when you can have ad, ad hoc communities instantly formed without regard to geography like Chia is in Malaysia, which blows my mind. Mm -hmm. So it's the first time we've ever been able to do that. So, I, you know, I wondered what was going on uh, with Twitter last week on Friday. I started a space ad hoc, uh, no announcement, no nothing, just impromptu. Started it, started talking with a few people. Samantha showed up before we knew it. Uh uh, close to 500 people were on there. Nice. Discuss, discuss, and inst we instantly formed a community. We talked about, you know, talked as Twitter customers, users, whatever you want to call us, tweeps, um, what we want, what we think of what's going on. You instantly, boom, formed a community. So this is the first time this can be done in human history. So I guess my message is put yourself out there. Great, George. And then it's Mariah here. I could chime in. And add on to, yes, put yourself out there, but then really make sure that you're reflecting on what you're putting out there and you're reassessing, yeah. realizing, and that what it is that you are producing and sharing with the world, especially on audio, is actually something that you're proud of. And 
you're saying things that you have researched or you are able to share a wealth or valuable knowledge on and so on and so forth because exactly what Gia said this is a tool it's not supposed to be a crutch for us and in you actually leveraging as a tool you're making yourself stronger and the people around you so nice Mariah Gia do you have any closing thoughts I don't know yes. I want to go Gia I want to go to you go go for it. <laughs> all right just be authentic be who you are you don't need to stress yourself the right people will connect with you. The right people will find you. That's all I want to say. Just find your purpose, find your passion. And it's an infinite fire pit that you can take from and the people will feel it. Just be who you are. I love it. Infinite fire pit. <laughs> Wonderful. As we close up today, the Conversationalists is a group of world-class audio experts that gather once a week to discuss timely events. Every speaker has shown their worth and their expertise in their own individual areas of expertise. And we invite you to, to join in next Saturday where Jennifer will be talking. I can't say her last name as well as her, she can. Navarrete uh, <laughs> will be talking about building in public. Um, we are on Clubhouse. We are on Twitter Spaces. We are on Wisdom. We are on LinkedIn Audio. Sometimes we stream to Facebook or YouTube or LinkedIn video. Also, The Conversationalist is a podcast, and you can find The Conversationalist on all podcast players. I want to thank my co-hosts, Rose and Daryl. Thank you so much. And I also want to thank all of the amazing speakers and the folks who ask questions both in chat and in real life. This is Jason Zakowski signing off. Thank you, team, for an awesome show. Thank you. Thank you. Bravo. To all thank wonderful, you. wonderful. To all Bye-bye. listeners today. You could be anywhere in the world. Thank you for coming today to listen. Thank you, everyone. Have a great weekend. Y'all rock. You love, be well. Love kind. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. A, thank you, guys. I had a quote from Jeffrey Winger. I forgot to say it. I now pronounce you a community. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take care, everybody. Bye bye. Space ending in three, two.